But what is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a bit of a different one. Um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a more serious talk today. Not really much content regarding the game. However, I would like to speak about why I believe Genshin Impact is so much better than Honkai Impact. And I know I sound very contradictory due to the fact that in basically every reaction video I did on my channel regarding Honkai cutscenes and stuff like that, I've always stated how it's better than Genshin Impact. But that was really in that aspect of the game. Re regarding the story, that's basically it why Honkai is better than Genshin. But there's so many other factors why Genshin is better than Honkai in general. And the first fact that I would like to talk about is like availability. Honkai Impact is a game you can play on mobile and your PC. That's it. I think I've heard they're going to try and bring out to PS4, but I'm not sure whether Genshin Impact is on both of those platforms and console. Regarding the fact that so many gamers out there play on console, that's already a huge W for Genshin Impact. And the player count is fucking stupid. It is so stupid. Genshin Impact averages around 50 million players a month. Whereas to Honkai Impact averages, and I shit you not, 700 in the last 30 days honka impact averaged 700 players and that is just so depressing because when you see stats this low how are you meant to motivate yourself to keep playing the game and as a content creator how can you motivate yourself to actually make good content around the game because honka impact it only has like two or three things going on for it that us me like a content creator can actually put out on youtube or on Twitch, no one's gonna want to watch me do one level on the story, read a couple voice lines, be like, oh, okay, cool, next level. No one's gonna watch that, right? No one's gonna uh, come over here to see me fail at the Elysian Realm. If you're not good at this game, then you're, you're just not gonna really succeed, that's all. The only topic that I always see and what really blew me up that helped me grow a little bit more on youtube was just reactions to the cutscenes and that brings me to my next point the content of the game regarding the story honkai has a huge win not only the fact that it has its own manga and i believe they said they're going to make its own their own anime series soon which i am so damn excited for but the story is just so much more impactful than genshin impact in Genshin Impact, there's the story of a brother and sister. You choose whatever one you want at the start. And you basically fight this unknown deity at the start of the game. And one of the siblings get captured. You're the first one to wake up. If you chose the brother, his name's Ether. If you chose the sister, her name's Lumi. And after that, you explore the world of Teyvat. You make friends. You fight people. Fight other more ancient deities. You find these people called the Archons and stuff like that, and it's just... It's okay. It's alright. But Honkai's impact story is just... It's sad. But great. In Honkai Impact, you're set in this... Almost what seems like a post-apocalyptic world, because... These monsters called the Honkai have been there for a very long time, and humanity have been struggling to... Face against them, but there's these women called the valkyries these people called the valkyries that just fight against them and the main character of the story is this random teenage girl called kiana and i find that very annoying at the beginning but as you go through the story you unravel more things there's a lot and i mean a lot of depressing stuff going on there's friendships that are broken friendships that are severe there's emotion between families uh the main character itself it is definitely not what it seems it's 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 messed up it's it is very messed up and i can appreciate a story like that whether it's anime manga book movie it doesn't matter i can appreciate a story that always makes me feel for a character however everything else regarding the content of the game such as like level design um side quests grinding for better stigmatas it's just very tedious it's very boring 
No, I'm not. And now I'm not saying for content creators to like pull out like, oh, I just cleared floor six in the abyss. Uh, oh my days, I just did Universal Mirage floor five. Not only no one's going to watch that, but that just sounds stupid. No one's going to want to see that. And to actually get a good piece of stigmata, just one. Is this stigmata, there's a character called Elysia in the game. And she has her own stigmata set. And I mind you not, that set, it is fucking broken. It is stu stupid. Right? For physical damage dealing. And in order to get it, let me, let me, let me explain what you have to do in order to get it. So the Universal Mirage, you get one ticket per day and then like two the next day or stuff like that. But point being, you get tickets every day. Those tickets can stack up to six and no more. If you run out, you have to wait the next day to get one ticket. In the Universal Mirage, there's those missions that give you some crystals. Let's just call them that, right? That gives you those crystals. And every stage in the universal mirage let's say i want to do the physical one where i get stuff those crystals that allow me to build physical stigmata there's seven layers i believe right and each one gives you more rewards or different rewards obviously naturally as the stages go on it gets more difficult so if i was to get one of these stigmatas for elysia i'd have to grind on other stigmata set, the beginning stigmata set, right? And that would be the towards the the beginning of the Universal Mirage physical stages. So I'll do like stage two, get enough of those crystals, make one stigmata from a different set. Now repeat that three times until I get the other two from the other set, right? After I do that, I have to move up like two stages to farm for another set called the direct set. That's the name of the set, I'm pretty sure. Not only it gets very hard, like much harder. You have to do that like once per day. Because if you're going to constantly grind this, you can only do it like once or twice per day. That's it. And maximum you can get is like 30 crystals where to where you need like 190 to craft it so you do that you use one of the stigmata from the other set that you got you put in a crafting recipe not only you have to get the other crafting materials that it displays you need to get those crystals once you get all of those crystals after like let's say a week and a half two weeks you can make one of the new stigmata set, one of the direct set. Repeat that three times. Move up more levels. The last stage of the Universal Mirage is the crystals that you need to get in order to actually craft Elysia. And mind you not, I'm stuck on like stage five or six because it is very fucking hard. It is very, very hard. If you want to actually efficiently clear those stages, you would have to be towards end game to do it. Or you would either pay money or just spend just spend your energy on that game until you get to like level 80. Only then you can actually start clearing those stages efficiently. To do the last stage, the seventh stage, you get like 10 of those crystals. Where you again, I think you need like 190 or 120. Right? And then you use one of those direct stigmata from the direct set and you combine it with the materials and the crystals since you get like 10 to 14 crystals per day to get to up to 190 let's see let me bring our calculator real quick to get all of those crystals let's say 14 i'm pretty sure it's 14 or it's around that number how many crystals you can get maximum so 14 no no, no it's 190 divided by 14. This is the amount of days that you'd have to grind for to get all of those crystals. Whoa, 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 let's chill out for a second. As I'm editing this, I actually ended up checking again on the actual game how many crystals you need to craft and how many crystals you can actually get per day or per 
successful mission. So it turns out you can get a maximum of eight crystals per mission and you need 140 to clear it out. So if you do the calculation, 140 divided by eight, that means you would have to grind for around 18 days straight if you want to have one of the Elysia pieces. And not only that, I also forgot to mention that in the Universal Mirage, there is a system called the Time Swirl Pass. Well, the Time Swirl Pass, which you can get fairly often. It's not that big of a deal, but if you don't have it, you can say goodbye to those Tigmaras. What that pass does, it allows you to get your highest potential reward at the end of every mission. If you don't have that pass, you only get about two of those crystals. But by spending a hundred of those tickets, you manage to get eight. But if you don't have these passes, it would take probably three times more to actually get those crystals. 13 days, right? 13 days max. You could get it less maybe, I'm not sure. But it's around that. Let's say you got those crystals, you have the full direct set, What's next? Materials. You need to get the required materials. Some of these materials you can only get by doing certain missions. And you can do those certain missions by paying one for the battle pass, for example. That just speeds it up. But if you don't want to speed it up, you have to grind until you get materials to buy the other materials so you can, and mind you not, you can let's pay, let's say you spend let's call it another currency let's name it red things that's what i'm gonna call it i'm gonna boom there's a picture of it right there okay that's what it is and i'm gonna just call it red things because i have no idea what the fuck it's called it is hard to get them the way you can get them is through let me check real quick so to get those red things the spatial convertron okay you can get them from the elysian shop in the elysian shop there you can get 10 per week so that's fine but that's with this currency which is all right so 10 per week and you would need if you were to get only from the elysian shop you need 200 so 200 divided by 10, you will have to grind for 20 weeks. Am I just being stupid? No, it's 20 weeks. Yeah, you'd have to grind for 20 weeks if you wanted to get 200 just from the Elysian show. Let's go to the Mirage store. The Mirage store, you need 500 of this. What is this called? Stigma Resonance. To get this, you can get them from finishing open world missions, right? Like every week, you get quest finalizations or stuff like that or you can get like let's say 500 of them per week okay for 500 and you need how much you get if you're lucky enough you can get if only you grind every single week for the rewards in your adventure level or you get lucky in the gacha and you get this currency and as you can see i didn't get very lucky okay so you can get 400 there. So that's good. I actually didn't know that. That's good. But that's only if you get lucky. And in the Elysian Realm, you can get it as weekly rewards. And how many? How much you can get? Let's see. 5, 10, and that's it. Ten. So you have to get that material. You have to get this, which you can only get from, you guessed it, Universal Mirage. You get it from doing the missions. And I'll be honest, you get a fairly generous amount. So that is not that bad to grind. Or you can just turn your materials into that currency, which I do not advise. Not at all. Considering how long you have to grind to actually get those materials, I would not advise it. I've done it before and I'm an idiot for doing it. Once you do all of this, you can finally get your first stigmata from the Elysia set. Now repeat everything I just said two more times. So you get my point why I'm saying this is tedious to do. So not only is tedious, if you want to do this as a content creator, no one's going to watch you do this. Nobody. No one out of that 700 player base is going to sit there and waste their time and watching you unless you're very funny, which 
I am. They do not care because I wouldn't. I would not want to sit there and waste my time on a streamer that all is doing is grinding for their first Elysia Stigmata. Moving on. The way the levels are made, it is very mundane. It is very underwhelming. It's always the same enemies. It's the same attacks. It's the same Valkyries. The only thing, yeah, the only thing that changes is, is your Valkyries, actually. That's it. You can change to a new Valkyrie. There's more damage. Use the same Valkyrie, get new Stigmata and weapon. You do more damage. The levels are very easy. There is no difficulty, which I can appreciate. But that just makes them long. All of that, just so you can get to a piece of text at the end to get a little intel on what's happening. Whether in Genshin Impact, you have the option to explore the world. When you kill enemies, you actually get rewards after you kill them. Whereas in Honkai Impact, you finish one mission, I can, I can get like one AE imagination where I need like 150 to craft one stigmata or something like that. And in Genshin Impact, there's always story, there's always something to do and you can have fun while doing it if you actually enjoy the game. I personally prefer the characters in Honkai Impact more than Genshin Impact. Because I find the characters in Genshin Impact way more mundane than the characters in Honkai Impact. Even though those games are basically siblings, they're both made by Mahoyo. And for those of you guys that played both Honkai and Genshin Impact, I'm pretty sure you know the infamous Raiden Shogun and Raiden Mei literally because some of the Genshin Impact were derived from Honkai Impact. Raiden Shogun was taken from Raiden Mei. If I was to compare those two characters, Raiden Mei, okay, she looks cool. She's an Archon, this lightning deity, the lightning queen, whatever. She can pull a sword out of her tits. Whereas in Honkai Impact, Raiden Mei, if you have the Hush of Thunder, oh my days, not only the damage is fucking mental, her attacks are clean as shit. Her design is nice as fuck. She has like some fucking, uh, some fucking, I don't know what they are. Just arms, I guess. Samurai arms behind her with some circle or whatever, like lightning circle. And then her ultimate, get this, she pulls out a fucking dragon. I rather very much play with a character that has a whole fucking dragon than a character that pulls a sword out of her tits. Don't get me wrong, I still find sexier shit, but it doesn't matter. Also, if you haven't seen my whole guy Impact character tier list, make sure you go watch that right now, where I go in depth for, with basically every character that is actually good and looks good. Another thing I want to talk about regarding the content is the post Honkai Odyssey. I'm going to forget every other adventure world, like the Sakura Samsara or whatever, the Shiksao HQ, I'm just going to talk about post Honkai Odyssey. Like, I feel like if the, if Honkai Impact structured their whole game, the story, the way that post Honkai Odyssey is, their game would do so much better. It would do so much better. You don't even understand. Post Honkai Odyssey is so fun. You can run around. It's sort of open world. It's not the map is not that big, but it's still enough. It is still more than a genuine level in the campaign. You go around, you can kill enemies or you can get materials or you can speak to people. You can take on quests, adventure tasks, and especially a post Honkai Odyssey 2. I haven't even finished the first one, but I'm already having a blast with post Honkai Odyssey 2. That shit is satisfying as shit, especially being able to skate around while looking at Timido's titties every single day it is fun as shit i find that so fun and when you can just go up in the sky and you just do her attack sequence and just charge attacks you can just basically go across the map in the sky with timido and it's just great the combat mechanics are nice the character uh, level ups are fairly satisfying and okay they're not not crazy to do there's nothing like tedious to do you always get materials to always level up your characters leveling up your moon ring just make sure you do your tasks that's basically it and it's that's fun that's more fun than doing a level in the campaign only reason why i'm doing the campaign is because i'm very captivated by the story very captivated by it if you've seen my vid my previous videos or my reactions you would understand how passionate about, uh, i am about this game story Another thing I want to bring to the table real quick is in terms of excitement, Genshin Impact wins. And here's why. I've talked earlier about farming stigmatas and how long and tedious it can be. 
where in Genshin Impact, you have those dungeons where you can get artifacts or level up materials. If you want to level up your weapons or your character. And there's plenty of them. There is plenty of them across the map. And every single artifact set serves for a different purpose, which is very nice. And each of those dungeons has four or five different difficulties. Depending on what adventure rank you are, the difficulty increases, but also does the reward. The risk reward is very, very good. But not only that, it is also fun to watch. It is, I personally like it when I watch someone like Tecton. I find, I, I find it very entertaining when this man just goes in and just shows every hillichel that he spent money on the game. Where you just go in there and you see your street, the streamer, you see him just one shot everything on the field in a high level dungeon. The thing is, you don't even have to spend money on the game to actually have very good and viable characters because artifacts are all up to your RNG. I can get an artifact and then when you roll your stats, it is all up to RNG. That does not pay money. In Honkai Impact, if you want to speed up processes or actually be good at the game, you have to actually spend money if you want to get good viable stimulus and weapons. Because a free-to-play gacha player like me, well, I can't really say I'm free-to-play. Literally last month, I spent like £100 trying to get stuck as a Nyx and I ended up getting fucked in the ass. But I did get Bronya three times in a row, next patch, so I'm okay with that, I guess. But for free-to-play people, what they have to do is constantly grind if they even have story. They should consider themselves lucky if you still have story missions to do because you still you still get 15 crystals per mission. But if you don't have to story, they have to grind the Legion Realm, they have to do um, what daily tasks, daily missions, events, uh, Abyss, all that stuff just to struggle to get crystals. And they have to do that every single day in order to get to build up to like one or two temples and get fucked in the ass in the end because they're probably not going to get it. Simple. Whereas in Genshin Impact, you are destined to get a character. Even if it's a shit character, it's a four star, it is still a character. And you can make that character fucking broken by getting good artifacts. And the fact that every single player, no matter if you're a well or a free to play in Genshin Impact, every single player can have good characters because every single player has the same chance at a good or bad artifact. That is great. And the last thing I want to talk about is statistics. Earlier, I went on Twitch to see how both the game genres are doing. And I shit you know, I genuinely got sad when I saw the stats. So Genshin Impact right now has 12,000 viewers and it is currently 4 p.m. in the UK. None of the like the massive streamers are actually streaming it because everyone is playing Lost Ark. Which, by the way, it is a great fucking game. So if you want to see me play, come over to the Switch and we'll have a good, a good time experiencing it. Right? We can make a good, we can make all a guild and everyone just have fun because that game is fun as shit and the story is fun. So everyone is playing Lost Ark. But back then, this game used to have like tens of thousands of viewers daily. When someone like, again, Tecton will stream, he'll have like 10k viewers per stream or some somewhere around that. Sometimes 20k. Sometimes 30k. And I don't really... I'll be honest, I don't very much care about many other streamers on Genshin Impact except Tecton. But like, there's people like... Um, M-Tashed, uh, Envy, Dish, they also rack up a lot of viewers while playing Genshin Impact. So right now, Genshin Impact is 12k viewers, whereas Honkai Impact is 500. And that's a lot. 500 viewers is a lot. It is so sad. It is sad. Because I know that Honkai Impact has great potential to be good. It can attract so many people if it would just be done differently. And it would be more available to other people on consoles too. But it just isn't. So it sucks. It really sucks. Either way, I love the game. I love the game. However, even I have to admit that I cannot play Honkai constant, consistently more than like, let's say a month. I haven't touched the game properly in like the past two or three weeks. All I've been doing was logging in, claim my rewards, get my XP chip, 
log out. If I have enough crystals, do a summon or two, and that's it. Only sometimes I have these bursts where I just grind out the game because I feel like playing it. That's it. So yeah. It sucks. It really fucking sucks. But hopefully the game will get a next mind-blowing update or something like that. Hopefully Honkai Star Rail is probably going to be great. I hope. I don't know. I actually haven't seen anything about it, but I hope that's going to attract some people at least or make some people come to the actual Honkai game because this game has so much potential. So much potential that is also wasted. But all in all, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you stuck out to the end, I very much appreciate you for bearing with me and my shitty ass opinion about video games. So yeah, dap it up and peace out my brothers and sisters. See you guys in the next video. Take care.